lot of buggy smoke down here. I also keep a piece of paper nearby too. I might toy around with it a little bit before I stick it on the artwork to see, well, how dark is this line going to be before I commit to putting it up on the page. And if you notice, I tape a nice smooth edge over the edges with painter's tape, quarter inch overlap. Gives me a nice crisp edge. It helps stretch the entire paper, giving me a nice good surface to work on. And then it works to have a nice clean edge when I'm done. I've talked about that in other videos, showing how to do that. You'll see me at the end here pull it off. All right. I'm also working on this. Sometimes I'll have things up on an easel with as much water and things on this and gravity working. I'm preferring to work like this flat and set this up so that not only could it be seen here, but gravity then won't be making any kind of runs down the down the page. They'll just be right in front of me kind of like a level flat area. So you can see here those bubbling up of the ink in the water when I do this kind of speckled pattern or blocky pattern deal then we're not gonna have all the drips be just at the bottom. But I can tilt and rock this just a little bit because a lot of the the bottom cloud ends do have more of the darkness toward the bottom. And this is just a way to, to play with it. Getting uh, lots of work in around these birds and such. And that's the part about art too that you want to do. There are people who have a style who can be very technical and they work and each thing that they do is planned out uh, that's great but when you're going quickly like this you can relax know that I'm just filling in this is for fun and you build on the previous work that you've done it's kind of like exercising you build on what you've done before and then you just do it without even thinking about it. Little techniques like I might have realized how I worked my brush around a bird earlier. Kind of know immediately now what it's going to look like when I get close to another bird. And I can do that same thing or, or I'm balancing out the composition and I say, you know, this area has some darker lines and I want to balance out the composition and I can see over here in my reference photo uh, that there's areas here that are dark, yes, over here, yes, these trees are all going to be dark, I'm going to have an overall balance in composition for the eye or trying to get that your eyes to travel around, see this, the smoke, the dark clouds, zoom, they come back, kind of a big circular motion. So I'm working on on that and doing work of getting in the because some of these pencil lines too we can work at erasing them but they're going to have ink and water and stuff and the graphite's going to be there the graphite might have blurred out a little bit I tried to make everything real light that's fine so some of that pencil work's going to go away but some of it if I didn't like how the pencil work actually was in the final, I'll actually have to come back through and work the ink around that stuff and make it look like I meant to do that. I meant to do that. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So does it look like I'm doing a big mess? <laughs> Kinda. Don't ask how the sausage is made, right? <laughs> We're making all sorts of messy work here. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I like doing with my inks, and I've been encouraged by other professional artists, is to work in uh, brush work because they like my brush work. Um, and that says something to you. Take, you know, criticism. What do people like? What do they not like? Well, if they came up and said, I don't really like uh, how you do uh, your rounded shapes, but look at this brush work. Well, my it tells me, hey, I got to look at a rounded shape more. How do I do those? And then how do I also. Uh, you know, go to my strength is, huh, they really liked my brushwork. I feel comfortable in that. I should be doing some more brushwork for people. With ink. Alright. Alright. Now, when I see this from above, I say, wait, there's this big white area here. That's an eagle's wing. <laughs> I'm going to be feeling that all in later. The King of the Eagles is carrying Gandalf. So uh, it's funny, I'll, I'll uh, be looking at, at the screen and saying, well, I can see stuff and how it's coming together. What's happening in this area? What, you know, it doesn't look as clean as, uh, you know, I'm trying to balance out the composition. And I look down and, well, I'm not filling that in because I can see that that's going to be a big uh, eagle's wing area. Some of these areas back here are going to just be so toned with uh, with the fire below them. They're not going to have hardly anything showing uh, of white around the eagles. So I'm taking my brush, uh, this is that muscle memory you'll develop, getting around things quickly with the edge of your brush, and just the motion and relaxing of doing it, I wouldn't have been able to do that when I first sat down and started moving my brush, it's just I needed to relax and work things up, and so that's what, or work work my muscles to relax and feel that comfortable movement of getting into the picture. Ooh, look at how dark that is. Oh, Tom, that's too dark. What are you doing? Well, maybe, maybe it is. I'm looking at a pretty dark image <laughs> on the other screen. I showed you that. It's got some areas that are really dark. And the thing with this, with ink, like you might in gouache, is we can go in with a little bit of water. Like say this area over here, I can get my brush wet, add some water to it, kind of work this in fainten it up a little bit
dull it down. See? See how that worked? I can tell as that water's soaking into the paper too, you can maybe hear that popping. Papers come up off of the uh, board a little bit and I'm working it in. I don't want it to get it too soggy. I don't want to go through and make a big pool of water or anything. I'm like, you know, I can always, as that starts to dry and restretch down and flatten again, if I want to add some more in there later, I can. Uh, some of this area, if it's like, oh, these edges are too sharp, I just grind that brush down into it and soften up those lines. Because this is all smoke. We are all smoke. We are all dust in the wind. We are all gonna figure this out someday. All right. All right. I'm getting a lot of good work in with my brush here. Some of these areas I am going to leave even lighter than I see them because I this is ink and I want them to stand out. I don't want everything to be a dull grayness to it. See there, I saw a little, you can't really see on the screen, I saw a dark line, just scrub it with my wet brush a little bit. It'll reactivate that ink just enough to get it out of there. So you do have kind of an eraser with your, with your brush. Okay. At this stage, doing it really light like this, as long as you keep it light and test it on your paper to the side, you can bring it back some. So I'll hit in dark areas. I'll hit in dark areas and then then if I feel like, uh, went too far, Tom. Tom, that's too far. And we'll bring it back. Come back to the light side, Tom. Whew! Look at that one. That stood out. See, you got a little, a little crazy there. That area is dark. But... And even if it's going to be that dark, I might look at it and say, ah, not ready to go that dark yet right there. Let's, uh, let's, let's bring it down. to be a really unnerving thing riding over a forest fire <laughs> being held by a bird even scary <laughs> but uh just the beauty of it and the marvel thing i'm never gonna, but the danger of it too not only the height but you fall in there you're uh not going to be rescued anytime soon all right And we were thinking, well, I hope the fall gets me. <laughs> so I'm not out of the frying pan into the fire, literally. All right. So I've got a lot of the smoke in here. Uh, it's going to look different than my reference. You know, that's why it's reference. So I'm using this reference. I'm looking at it. You could be saying, I need to put more dark in there. Why don't I do more of this, more of that? You can. 
it's always a push and pull of how much you had in. I haven't even got to doing fire and trees and things yet. I was just looking at the clouds. Okay. And then also trying to imagine in my mind's eye, where is this going to go when I add in an unknown like the birds, the eagles, and the, the dwarves and everything, and all that little, those little, that work and all the little brushwork. So, uh, giving me a break looking at the looking at the whole thing again there's certain areas I think well now I can work in some of these dark areas now And it's made up. It's fantastical. What are we gonna? What are we gonna see when we get to the end? Something made up. One of my favorite scenes in the Lego Movie where they go, "What a bunch of hippie dewy baloney." That sounds wonderful, right? I mean, Sounds like something you just made up. <laughs> All right, we're making it up. Okay, now I'm going to go in with what I see as a few areas of working in it's just some dark renditions around some cloud poofs that either I see in my eye or I see in my reference. Da, 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 da. Yes, going in there. All right. In a way, I'm watercoloring right now. Yep, it's ink, but this is just a gray wash ink watercolor all the way. Trying to hit dark spots while leaving as well the, the areas of uh, white smoke or flame. Okay. And especially in Ink 2, I try and work in the back area of trying to. trying to get everything in so it looks smooth, homogenous, and uh, I'm not going to want to go back and touch the background very much once I start working on these birds because then if I'm going along at the top of one of them and my watery mix that I do the clouds with hits into one of the birds, then it's going to bleed off the bird and look like fuzzy bird, <laughs> fuzzy bird going into the background. And I don't necessarily want that. And this is the very painterly aspect of doing this. Ooh, that was dark. That's dark too. That India ink, man, if you get a load of it on your brush, it will. It will take over. 
see that. Whew. Starting to go in darker now. I also have a paper towel up there too if I feel like I got too much water on something. I'll just uh, soak it off the soak it off the brush with a paper towel. You can kind of see it here in the corner. See that? My little sample page, a little paper towel. Take some of that. I like how that's looking now. So dark, so fast. remember one time, a uh, long time ago, I was doing something with, you know, you ever heard of the game Car Wars? Me and some friends played it in high school, and there was a uh, part of it where you'd always have all these explosions, and they were always drawing them with cars, and so I just worked on quite a bit of work one time on explosions, how the round of the fireballs, how do you uh, show something. It's really interesting because how do you make something look like an explosion? It's static, you're using flat colors and such. What are you going to do to make an explosion? And then they'll have stuff even modern day where people talk about an explosion or something like that and my mind instantly jumps to doing the artwork of an explosion. Hmm. See, as an artist, you're going to be in your own little world sometimes where someone says something and it triggers kind of like this dark seated memory. <laughs> A dark. Uh, thought of. Wait, did I? work on something like that one time. You see, you know, that's why artists have a vacant look on their face when you're talking to them sometime. You said something, and it triggered something just like... Uh, <laughs> uh, somebody might be having a flashback. Explosions. Dun, 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 trigger. Cup of coffee. Dun, dun, dun. Lots of smoke going on now, isn't there? All right, a big uh, idea that we're going to do is see how big this brush is. And the little ends, they'll come together when you get it wet. But when I start working, it starts getting dry. They start splitting apart because the bristles clip together as it dries. And then I'll wet it again and do the whole process again. ASMR. <laughs> So I'm going to Now I think what I'll do is I'm going to switch to a smaller brush because I'm going to start doing more details in this uh 
fire, uh, including the trees or pattern work around the flames. And that's what I'm going to do in uh, showing you how to, I would do it, um, experimenting, building, doing the flame work in the background. And this took uh, about, in the grand scope of things, maybe 45 minutes or so. I edited it down. Not bad. I'm getting there. Thanks for joining me on this part. Let's move on to the next.